And finally, uh, I'd like to introduce Adam Lowry, who, with his business partner, Eric Ryan, founded uh, Method Cleaners, which was basically one of the fastest growing companies in America. Um, it, he started in product design by inventing two automotive products. They could probably use you again, Adam. <laughs> um, and then he went on I can't to, found, help. <laughs> to found Method, which is now a $100 million company. Um, methods, as, as most of us no method because it has become pervasive and um, it people against dirty is has been their their uh, uh, motto and it, it kind of goes across all all from cleaning to uh, them offsetting their carbons to just the way they do business in general um, you know one of the great things about method is that uh, is, is is design we all love those bottles and um, you know one of the things they, they've said is that they're some of the finest pieces of recyclable plastic art this side of MoMA so um, I'm, I'm thinking you guys need to go build something at Burning Man um, uh, we've thought so. about that <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> we'll talk later really um, wood not plastic though <laughs> Adam also, uh, I found out, has a, a penchant for muscle cars, and he drives around every once in a while in a 1967 Pontiac GTO uh, convertible. And um, one of the things I'm going to ask um, Adam to kind of start us off after he, um, after he talks, does his little spiel. Explains why I have a, G a GTO. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can explain that later. But what I want to know, uh, one of the other things I ran into is one of their uh, kind of company principles or one of the big questions that they have posted all over their office and actually they all carry around with them yeah. is uh, their problem solving model, what would MacGyver do? So, <laughs> so um, first I'm going to say, you know, you need to tell for those of us who are TV illiterate or foreign, um, let us know who MacGyver is, and then let's start off the conversation by saying, you know, in this current economic crisis, we're looking at innovation, what would MacGyver yeah. do? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it was actually horrifying to me when we started hiring, I realized that I was not as young as I used to be when we started hiring people, yeah, and you know. what would MacGyver do is one of our five company values that I have on these cards that we all carry with us. And younger employees were like, who, who's MacGyver? <laughs> like, what, what do you mean, who's MacGyver? Everybody knows who MacGyver is. Um, and, and it is one of our five um, company values, and what it's about is resourcefulness. Um, I mean, as, as probably most of you know, what we do at Method is we make healthy and green home care products that are hip and fun and stylish and all those things. And at the end of the day, each and every one of those attributes of what we do is copyable. Um, and, and, and in fact, we want to be copied, right? It's a good thing if more and more people start kind of doing stuff the way that we're doing things. And so it's actually a fundamental core element of our business model. What we don't want is we don't want to be like the one person and then try to you know, create some sort of IP fortress around something and then own some sort of market share. Um, actually, our role in the category is to try to establish a new status quo, have people copy it, and then that gives us a license to go do it again. And so um, on the back of these cards, there's a, I won't read the whole thing, but there's a statement that basically says, you know, Copy our design, copy our philosophy, copy our products, copy our fragrances, copy our copy. But you'll never copy our culture. And if you come to Method, you will, you will see pictures of MacGyver all around the office. And, um, and what it's about is as a smaller company, we, we don't have the resources to beat, you know, our competitors, you know, our smallest competitor um, is, is like a $5 billion company, right? So we're not going to... We, we can't beat them on scale. We have to beat them on speed and resourcefulness. And so that's what, that's what MacGyver's all about. And uh, as to the, the, the car thing, I do like to work on cars. And I grew up in Detroit. <laughs> and you can take the boy out of Detroit, but you can't take, or the, you can take the boy out of Detroit, but not the Detroit out of the boy. So, guilty. <laughs> all right. Um, so, so uh, you know, basically... The resourcefulness is, is going to be a, a key component of, of one of the things that everybody agrees here on. And I think one of the cool things that we found at breakfast this morning when we all met was that, um, well, fundamentally, these guys all pretty much agree. There's some, there's some little differences of opinion, too, and I, that, that should make this fun. Um, <clears throat> so so the, the kind of what would MacGyver do framed another way for, especially for you, because you probably didn't grow up watching MacGyver. Um, is, you know, how has, in the current economic, uh, economic climate, how important is innovation 
to, um, to your businesses? Is how, has it become more important? Has it become less important? Is it something that's like, oh, geez, we can't fund it? Or, you know, how important is it? Do you want to start? Yes, thanks. Uh, so if you would uh, look 10 years forward in 2020, and we would look back and say, OK, what happened in 2009? So there was a real crisis, and there was a real big change. And I think for companies uh, we present over here, uh, or all you believe in here, it will be the turning point. It will have much more power. The opportunity is in the crisis. I strongly believe that. And so uh, what should we change at Hessner too? Okay, nothing. We do it uh, since 33 years, and we do it over and over again. And there's nothing to change right now. But what you have in uh, economic uh, uh, critical years, you go for costs, you cut costs, you, you cut investments. Uh, that's, that's normal, it's uh, economically driven then. But uh, we, you have to change something too. We uh, watched uh, what's happening in the community, and the green community is uh, very good related to each other. So uh, if you look at our customers in our shops, uh, they look really different. They don't have the same style, but they believe in the same things. So they are related somehow, and so we changed our marketing uh, direction. We uh, spent more money with PR and uh, social media, social marketing, than we spent, it, uh, uh, than we spent with direct marketing. So we, we switched budget. This was one of the things we did in the last year. Uh, and uh, another thing we uh, are going for is to uh, go for corporations uh, to uh, make win-win situations, go to uh, work together with companies which are in the, in the same green niche and uh, share customer base and uh, just to make it easier for all of us. And this pretty good works. Thank you. Malika, did you want to address that? Sure. <clears throat> I'm going to approach it from a, a different perspective. Um, so in my life, um, as I said before, intent has played a big role. Um, many of you know um, my father, who's Deepak Chopra. Um, and I grew up uh, really from the beginning. I started meditating when I was nine. And one of the things that um, my father uh, taught us, and I just wrote it down because sometimes, believe it or not, I forget it, um, was to say, um, I'm responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience and set the goals I will achieve. And everything that happens to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. So I think one of the things that we've seen, um, you know, in this time of tremendous turmoil, um, and in a time when actually many people have been laid off from their jobs, um, when they're losing their homes, um, when people are dealing with some real core uh, challenges in their personal um, life, in their social life, um, is kind of a return to basic values um, and basic what what do we want? Who am I? Where do I come from? And um, what is my purpose here? Um, so I think that's kind of where intent comes into play um, and where we've kind of, as a company even, um, which is a very young company and we, we've really just launched recently, um, even in the midst of turmoil, which we were caught up in in terms of funding drying up and things like that, is again going back to our core and saying, you know, what is our intent as a business um, and what can we do um, at a core level, um, maybe even relook at timelines and things like that. But again, what is our intent? And so I think one of the things I passed around um, are these post-its. Um, and we've found that you know stating your intent, um, and it may be a personal intent or kind of a company intent, um, and using that as an anchor, um, again, um, helps you kind of uh, really be reminded of that. And in, in this time, I think that's even more important than otherwise.